सो वेलकम बैक एवरी वन दिस इज माई एंक एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ आर चैप्टर इंटरेस्ट रेट स्वैप्स द मीनिंग ऑफ स्वैप इज वेरी सिंपल सर स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड सिंपल इन ईजी लैंग्वेज इट मीन्स एक्सचेंजिंग समथिंग विथ वॉट वी हैव सी सो इफ आई हैव समथिंग आई एम गोइंग टू गिव इट टू यू यू हैव दैट थिंग आई एम गो यू आर गोइंग टू गिव इट टू मी सो वॉट विल वॉट विल बी द प्रोसीजर इट्स वेरी सिंपल सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इंटरेस्ट रेट स्वैप्स आर नॉट ट्रेडेड ऑन एक्सचेंज सो देर इज नो देर आर नो रूल्स इट इज ओवर द काउंटर मार्केट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इट्स जस्ट लाइक फॉरवर्ड रेट एग्रीमेंट वॉट हैपन्स इन द एफ आर ए एंड इंटरेस्ट रेट स्वैप्स इज both can be customized depending upon the needs of the parties whereas the other two derivatives like interest rate uh, futures and interest rate options both of them are traded on the exchange and that's why everything related to these are standardized and decided by the exchange so we have to either take it or leave it in case of interest rate futures and options but in fra and interest rate swaps we can frame the transaction as per our need the major purpose of the swap is to hedge parties hedge parties from the risk of interest rate now <clears throat> see in order for the two parties to enter into a swapping contract you need to understand that the requirement of both the parties should be opposite so it's just like a uh, a magnet when you keep two magnets the north and the north pole cannot connect with each other it's the north and the south pole that will connect with each other it's it's it will it is going to be the same in the interest rate swaps if i am of this i am expecting that in future the market rates are going to rise your expectation should be the market rates are going to fall and only then we can enter into a transaction only then we can enter into a transaction of interest rate swaps what will happen you will believe that your prediction will come true i will believe that my prediction will come true and both the parties will enter into a transaction wait for the maturity and on maturity what will happen on maturity either your prediction will be uh, right or my prediction will be right whosoever's prediction is uh, the reality on that date one party will have gain one party will have loss that's to for sure but what you can do is you can remove the risk both of us can remove the risk of interest rate unknown interest rate we can fix what are whatever uh, sorry we can fix what are going to be the cash outflow for both of us let's say for example you are the borrower i am also the borrower you are the borrower i am also the borrower the risk to both of them is in general is the rise in interest rate but rise in interest rate is the risk to a party who has taken the loan at floating rate but it is not the risk to a party who has taken the loan at a fixed rate understand this by this uh, understand the situation by this diagram so let's say you are the borrower i am also the borrower let's say you have taken loan at floating rate and i have also taken loan but i have taken it at fixed rate and the rate is 10% floating rate let's say it is libor plus 0.50 so this is going to be interest payment for uh who who is this person let me just write it down you and me okay so your cash outflow is floating is at floating rate at every reset period so you are paying interest to the bank since both of us are borrower we will be paying interest to the bank i will also be paying interest to the bank now let's just keep it here this is bank 
you will be paying l plus 0.5 every time i will also be paying the interest but that's 10 percent fixed let's say for example for the sake of simplicity the loan taken by both of us is 100 crore 100 crore each and it has been taken for let's say five years keeping it simple annual payment will be there now we have taken the loan one year has completed four years are left now what is happening you 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 borrower you are thinking that the interest rate in the market now is going to rise if it actually goes up you will have to pay more interest in the coming time and that's what the risk to you is because the principal amount of 100 crore is same but the cost will keep on increasing every year if the LIBOR increases because you have a loan of a floating rate then you might ask a question someone might ask a question that why did we actually borrowed at a floating rate when we have this risk it's very simple sir you borrowed the loan one year back and at that time it might be the, the, the situation in the economy might be like that that you expected that the floating rate is going going to go down in the future but in one year's time your your perception has changed it has exactly going opposite now you are thinking that instead of falling it is going to go up but you have already taken a loan now you cannot just simply cancel the loan because you will have to return that 100 crores immediately if you want to cancel it so what is the option for hedging you cannot just keep on watching the interest rate to go up paying higher interest rate every year to the bank so the risk to you is rise in interest rate am i right this is the risk to you now in this scenario it is very important to understand that how we can hedge ourselves from the risk of rising interest rate it's very simple sir convert yourself from a floating rate loan to a fixed rate loan and that's it you can just hedge yourself Convert yourself into a fixed rate loan. How to do, how to do that? That we are going to learn in a while. Now let's talk from my angle. I am the borrower. I have taken a fixed rate loan. Okay. And my view for the future is the rates are going to fall. The risk to me is falling interest rate. How come? Sir, I will tell you. Let's say for example, next year the LIBOR goes down to 8%. Okay. So what will be the maximum payment that I would have made if I would have borrowed it at floating rate? 9 plus, 8 plus 0 0.5, 8.5%. So when the floating rate is going down, the interest rates in the markets are going down, I will still pay 10% fixed. So I don't want to pay the extra amount when I know that I cannot take the profit or I cannot take the benefit of falling interest rate. Fall in the interest rate is good for the people who are taken who have taken floating rate. And now I am I'm now understand that if the interest rates are going to fall every year, every year I will still pay 10% fixed. See, interest rate will go like this and I will pay the fixed amount. I will still pay the fixed amount every year. This much, this much, this much, this much, 10% fixed when the rates are going down. Is there any way to hedge myself or let me just draw the same for this guy also that means you in this case we were expecting that the interest rates will go up and since we have a floating rate our payment will also be like this do you understand what is happening with the rise in the interest rate my cash outflow is also rising but in this case with the fall in the interest rate my cash flow is still fixed so both the parties are at risk understand this situation when the interest rate are rising the floating rate borrower is at risk when the interest rates are falling the fixed rate borrower is at risk and both the parties now can hedge themselves 
बिकॉज बोथ ऑफ देम हैज अपोजिट व्यू फॉर द फ्यूचर ऑब्वियसली वन ऑफ द ट्रू वन ऑफ द टू विल बिकम ट्रू द द आफ्टर थ्री मंथ्स इंटरेस्ट रेट विल इधर राइट लाइक वुड हैव गॉन अप और वुड हैव गॉन डाउन बट टुडे बोथ ऑफ देम आर थिंकिंग एग्जैक्टली अपोजिट एंड बोथ ऑफ देम आर स्केर्ड ऑफ मेकिंग हाई इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट टू द बैंक दे वॉन्ट दे डोंट वॉन्ट टू पे हायर अमाउंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट सो बोथ ऑफ देम आर लुकिंग फॉर हेजिंग नाउ कैन वी हेल्प देम यस सर नाउ हाउ कैन वी हेज both of them it's very simple sir convert the floating rate borrower to fixed rate convert the floating rate borrower to a fixed rate borrower so if we convert let's say for example how to hedge i will just write it down convert to fixed rate borrower and ask him to convert himself to floating rate now understand this is the red line this is the red line which will show what will happen after converting so if this guy converts himself into a fixed rate borrower he will be paying the fixed rate of interest all the years right and it will be let's say if we fixed it today it will be like this so the red line indicates that today you might be paying higher than this but this at this point let's say this point this point this point this point so in the coming year you will be paying lower interest rate when the actual interest rate will be high if the interest rates are going to rise you can shift to this line you can shift to this type of payment where your interest payment will be fixed and you don't have to worry about the rising interest rate so that's when we can convert ourselves or we can hedge <coughs> ourselves and to this person convert to floating rate borrower floating rate means whatever the interest rate will be he will be paying that so to the floating rate borrower he once he converts himself he will be paying the interest in this manner he will be paying the interest in this manner so the red line indicates what will happen after conversion you can clearly see that the red line is going down in this case it is going down means the interest rates interest cost to uh, the fixed rate borrower is coming down and in this case also even if the interest rates are rising in the market but the cost to the borrower is same that means at this point the interest rates are high still i'm paying low interest rates are high still i'm paying low in this case interest rates are low and still i'm paying low interest rates are low and still i'm paying low so both the parties can convert themselves okay this is what the main purpose is now how to do that it is through interest rate swaps it's very simple sir <clears throat> both of them will meet each other both of them will meet each other and they will exchange their interest payment with each other they will exchange their interest payment with each other that means what the borrower who has paid the libor to bank will take it back from this borrower so this borrower borrower 2 let's say we give them the names borrower 2 and borrower 1 it's 1 and 2 will be okay instead of you and mank so borrower 2 will make the payment of libor to borrower 1 so for borrower 1 it is like no floating payment he has made he will obviously make a libor payment to the bank bank has nothing to do with the transaction between both of you but in net you can see that borrower will pay libor to the bank and the same will be returned back by the borrower too so libor has gone libor has received libor is a payment libor is a receipt net effect is zero and in return since borrower 2 has made some payment to the borrower 1 borrower 1 will make a fixed payment to the borrower 2 that is 10% borrower 1 will make a fixed payment to the borrower 2 that is 10% now look how the transaction will happen for borrower 1 he will pay to the bank how much libor plus 0.5 borrower 2 will pay to the bank how much 10% this will be as it is interest rate swaps will not affect the transactions of each borrower with the bank it will be honored as agreed between the parties but now the swaps transactions will happen 
अंडर स्वैप वी विल टेक समथिंग एंड वी विल गिव समथिंग अंडर स्वैप वी विल टेक समथिंग एंड वी विल गिव समथिंग सो देर विल बी सम काइंड ऑफ रिसिप्ट एंड देर विल बी दिस पेंसिल इज नॉट वर्किंग मैन रिसिप्ट एंड देर विल बी सम काइंड ऑफ पेमेंट सिंपली वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू रिसीव वी मीन्स द बोरोवर वन इज गोइंग टू रिसीव वॉट एवर ही हैज पेड टू द बैंक सो लाइबॉर इज द ओनली फ्लोटिंग अमाउंट दैट ही हैज पेड टू द बैंक डोंट कंसिडर दिस पॉइंट फाइव बिकॉज दिस वॉज फिक्सड दिस वॉज ऑलरेडी नोन सो ही विल रिसीव द लाइबॉर फ्रॉम बोरोवर टू दैट मीन्स बोरोवर टू विल पे द लाइबॉर टू बोरोवर वन एम आई राइट If something is cash inflow to one party, it is a cash outflow to other party. So borrower too. Understood? This is an agreement between both of them. There is no formula to that. And since he has received something from borrower too, he will have to make a payment of something to borrower one. So that's let's say ten percent. Okay, that's outflow. Ten percent. If he is paying ten percent to borrower two, borrower two is receiving ten percent from borrower one, and you can clearly see that minus ten percent plus ten percent. This ten percent is paid to the bank. This is received from the borrower one, and both of them has closed. Now, if you do the total, you can clearly see that both the parties has shifted their net interest cost to the other rate. In this case, you can see minus L plus L will get cancelled. Minus if we if it goes in bracket it is minus point five minus ten so it's going to be ten point five percent net cost and in this case minus LIBOR net cost so both of them have shifted to the other side of the story that means borrower two has a net cost in floating rate now he has shifted and borrower one has a net cost in fixed rate you can clearly see. when they started the loan with the bank this borrower one were was paying floating rate now he has converted himself to a fixed rate when borrower two borrowed the money from the bank he was paying fixed rate now he has converted himself to a floating rate it was all because of their opposite expectation of the interest rate in future both of them are exactly opposite having exactly opposite expectation and that's why both of them entered into a transaction and the transaction is very simple sir whatever you have to pay to the bank just make the payment first of all and whatever you paid to the bank you receive it from the other party you receive it from the other party and automatically when you do the total when you do the net it will be you will you will see that we have converted ourselves into some other type of rate now if according to borrower one the interest rate actually rises it will be benefit for the borrower one because he will be paying the fixed amount of loan when the interest rates are going up still he is paying fixed amount of interest cost but if the <coughs> borrower two borrower two was expecting the fall in the interest rate and it and if it actually falls he will be paying the lower interest rate because whatever it will be this is going low and he is paying low that is what is going to happen in reality whenever the interest rate will come to the picture both of them uh, will not make a profit or both of them will not be happy one of them will be happy by entering into this transaction and the other party will suffer loss because in reality either the loan are going to go up or it is going to go down it will not go up and down at the same time so this is what the swapping is now uh, everything is dependent on the question to question we are going to do some calculations and we are going to see how the cash flows will be settled please understand that sometimes the other swapping party is bank we can enter into a swapping uh, transaction with the bank as well bank will keep their commission why this happens i will tell you because it is very difficult for a person to find out exactly the other person who has having the opposite uh, mindset or opposite view of the interest rate so i am sitting in mumbai someone might be in delhi and both of us need uh, the swapping arrangement but we cannot find each other at that time we, both of us can put a request in the bank and bank has a very good network with each other also with the other banks as well so automatically they can match our requirement and then they can help us entering into a swapping transaction and for that purpose they will obviously keep the gain 
uh, keep some type of commission so that will increase our cost of entering into a swap uh, transaction so all in all i will tell you one thing swap has no rules first of all uh, there is no formula second third thing it can be customized between the parties fourth thing the simple meaning of swap is exchanging exchanging okay in terms of diagram we can draw it once let's say this is a bank and this is a bank and this is one party this is borrower two and we have taken a loan from the bank and we are paying libor plus 0.50 this guy has also taken a loan from the bank and he is paying 10 percent they have taken their respective loan now they want to shift to the other part that means he is a floating rate borrower he wants to shift to the fixed rate why because he is worried about the rising interest rate he is a fixed rate borrower he wants to shift to the floating rate why because he is worried about the falling interest rate so both of them will have opposite view so both of them will enter into a swapping transaction and the swapping transaction will happen like this we will pay something and we will receive something and it's very simple whatever we pay to the bank we receive it from the other party so what are we going to receive LIBOR and what are we going to pay fixed amount fixed amount of interest can vary it's not necessary to pay 10% it can be 9% as well at that time there will be some cost to him okay so if you see from both the parties angle uh, our outf outflow was L plus 0.5 inflow was l and outflow is 10 in this case outflow is 10 outflow is libor and inflow is 10 so the net will be 10.5 percent outflow and outflow of l so we can easily shift ourselves from this was fixed now we are paying floating this was floating now we are paying fixed this is how the swapping arrangement is done let's have a look on the questions So this is question number 27 uh, no yeah 27 that we are going to start with so p limited a dealer quotes all in cost for a generic swap now first of all all in cost means everything included in that particular percentage no hidden charges generic swap it uh, means a simple swap of fixed versus floating fixed versus floating that means someone is exchanging fixed rate with a floating rate swap at six percent against six months libor so this is like six percent versus libor someone will take six percent and give libor to other party flat if the notional principal amount of swap is eight lakh rupees calculate the semi-annual fixed payment it's very simple sir eight lakh we have to calculate the fixed payment and the fixed rate is six percent 8 lakh into 6% everything is per annum 6% is also per annum LIBOR is also per annum so 6% is per annum that means for semi-annual 3% 8 into 3% that's 24,000 it's very easy to calculate it's not that difficult that's a semi-annual payment now find the first floating rate payment floating rate means this LIBOR for above if the six month period from the effective date of swap to the settlement date comprises of 181 days now you have to take it in days generic swap is based on 330 by 360 days so what you can do in case of six percent also 30 by 360 means for six months it is 180 days now but in case of floating rate they are saying consider 181 days in the six month and that the corresponding LIBOR was five percent on the effective date of swap so it's very simple sir 8 lakh multiplied by LIBOR means 5% this is a floating rate LIBOR is the floating rate but 5% is per annum what are you going to do 181 divided by 365 that will give you the first payment first floating rate payment someone will give to sir other party now who is paying and who is receiving doesn't matter so the calculation is again very simple 8 lakh multiplied by 5% multiplied by 181 divided by 360 okay so that's the 2120 so what will happen I will tell you let's say there are two parties A and B both of them decided to exchange fixed versus floating so let's take A is paying 
fixed and receiving floating okay uh okay so what will happen on the first payment a will pay 24000 and b will pay 2120 on the first 6 months 20120 now understand so this is the first 6 month in at this date there will be some exchange of fixed and floating payment fixed payment though is very well known from the very beginning floating payment will be known on that date which will be 2120 so someone has to pay 24000 and has to receive 2120 instead of paying 24000 and then receiving 2120 what is the practical method to settle in net so that's what the question is asking you in question number 2 above if the settlement is on net basis how much the fixed rate payer would pay to the floating rate payer you can please easily say that fixed rate payer is having a higher amount for payment than receiving so whosoever is going to pay fixed amount he will receive less but pay more so that's why he is going to be the net payer 24000 minus 20000 that is going to be the settlement amount for the first 6 month on the next 6 months this amount will remain same but the libor will change and accordingly the floating rate payment will change this is the simple way of swapping now you will ask where is the swapping involved in that obviously this question was not given in detail since it is the first question but i will tell you there was some hidden picture which was not given in the question there were two parties who wanted to exchange so let's say for example he wanted to pay fix to the he agreed to pay fix to the other party and the other party agreed to pay floating to the first party then you can clearly say that both of them might have taken loan from the bank this is this picture is not given in the question so this is bank and this is bank okay now you just tell me at which rate every party has each party has taken loan from the bank simply saying if if this first party is receiving floating that means he is paying floating to the bank and if this party is receiving fixed that means he is paying fixed to the bank so what exactly is happening is this party this first party is pay he has taken a floating rate loan from the bank and he is now worried about the rising interest rate to the floating uh, rate buyer rising interest rate is a thing to worry about and that's why he wanted to shift to a fixed payment and then this is the swap that we have arranged to the other party if you will say he is paying fixed to the bank that means he is worried about the falling interest rate because once the interest rate will fall he will still have to pay the fixed amount and he doesn't want to pay the same amount he wants to pay lesser amount as the interest rate falls so this party wants to shift to the floating so this is exactly the background picture you can imagine although not given in the question in the entire question what has happened they have just talked about this thing not the entire scenario that's why it's just a part of the swap okay let's focus on the next question next question is very much similar to the previous one so you will take it as homework okay semi annual first floating rate payment and then settlement is on net basis so everything is same now let's shift to the question number 29 this is an interesting question now derivative bank entered into a plain vanilla swap plain vanilla i will tell you why the name is vanilla just imagine the types of ice cream that you get in the market there are multiple types of like many types of uh, ice cream available mango strawberry mixtures there are various available but the root or the start of the ice cream always start with this vanilla ice cream that is called as the basic ice cream without any mixture okay without any combination of two fruits and everything so in the swap also the basic type of interest rate swap is fixed versus floating fixed versus floating that's what the uh, plain vanilla swap is through an overnight index swap ois is a method of 
वी कैन से स्वैपिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ स्वैपिंग एवरी डेज कैलकुलेशन विल बी मेड एंड स्वैप्ड विथ ईच अदर सो एवरी डेज इंटरेस्ट रेट और वी कैन से फ्लोटिंग रेट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एंड एवरी डे वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट इंटरेस्ट पेबल एंड रिसिवेबल ओवर नाइट इट सेल्फ मीन्स वन डे ऑन अ प्रिंसिपल ऑफ टेन करोड एंड एग्रीड टू रिसीव माई बॉर ओवर नाइट फ्लोटिंग रेट फॉर अ फिक्सड पेमेंट ऑन द प्रिंसिपल सी दिस इज अ डेरीवेटिव बैंक एंड दे एंटर्ड इन टू दिस एग्रीमेंट वेयर दे एग्रीड टू रिसीव माई बॉर वॉट डज दैट मीन सो दे आर माई बॉर इज अ फ्लोटिंग रेट एंड यू आर एग्रींग टू रिसीव दिस दैट मीन्स इन स्वैप वॉट आर यू गोइंग टू पे फिक्सड automatically if you are receiving floating that means automatically you are ex- agreeing to pay the fix overnight floating rate for a fixed payment on the principal the swap was entered into on monday 2nd august 2010 okay and was to commence from 3rd august 2010 and run for a period of 7 days respective my bor rates for tuesday to monday it has to run from tuesday 3rd august because on monday it was 2nd august on tuesday it will be 3rd august and it has to run so on from tuesday to monday the my bars are given to you 7.75 8.15 and so on if the derivative bank received 317 net on settlement so you understand they received net and received means can i say every day if i am paying fix and receiving floating and the net of both is receipt that means floating was higher than fixed can i say that floating was higher than fixed by 317 rupees okay calculate the fixed rate of interest for the swap and interest under both the legs legs means fixed leg and floating leg so on all the 7 days understand every day the calculation was ma- uh, was being made by us but the settlement happened only after 7 days at 317 rupees that to derivative bank received it okay sir and we have to calculate what was the swap rate for fixed payment hmm <clears throat> so what is happening this is derivative bank this is other party every day we are receiving we are about to receive like every day we are to receive floating rate which are given to you so you can easily calculate that amount 7.75% on 10 crore for one day this is per annum you have to calculate it for one day one divided by 365 okay so for all the seven days you can easily calculate the floating receipt but when you will do all the uh, when you will do the total of all the receipt you will have to deduct 317 net settlement out of that to calculate the fixed payment for 7 days because the question says that in net you have received 317 that means the floating amount is 317 rupees higher than the fixed amount that we paid this is receipt and this is also receipt so payment will be lesser na so we are calculating fixed payment by deducting 317 now we have the fixed payment we will divide it by 10 crore for 7 days to find out the fixed rate so this is how we are going to do the calculation have a look we have created a table we'll start with the tuesday 10 crore is the principal amount at 7.75% just multiply 7.75% into 1 divided by 365 Round it off to the nearest rupee. Sunday is a holiday. Work in rounded rupees and avoid decimal working. So don't write anything in decimal. Okay. So when you do the calculation, ten crore into seven point seven five percent divided by three sixty five. That means for one day, you get this much of the amount. This is the amount that the derivative bank is supposed to receive, but it has not received that amount. It has received the settlement after seven days. That to only three hundred and seventeen rupees. So, did we receive this much of the amount? No. So, what will happen on the very next day? The next day, this floating rate receipt is to be calculated on the compounded value, ten crore plus twenty one thousand two thirty three. 
नेक्स्ट डे द इंटरेस्ट विल बी कैलकुलेटेड ऑन द प्रिंसिपल प्लस द प्रीवियस इंटरेस्ट विच वॉज नॉट पेड बाय द अदर पार्टी एंड सिंस इट वॉज नॉट पेड वी आर अगेन गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट द इंटरेस्ट ऑन दैट दैट टू एट पॉइंट वन फाइव परसेंट फॉर द सेकेंड डे ओके डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव नाउ द इंटरेस्ट इज टू ट्वेंटी टू थ्री थर्टी फोर दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट पेड बाय द अदर पार्टी वी विल एड दैट इन द प्रीवियस अमाउंट सो टेन करोड ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड टू थर्टी थ्री प्लस ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड थ्री थर्टी फोर विल बी दिस मच एंड द थर्ड डेज इंटरेस्ट विल बी कैलकुलेटेड ऑन दिस इन द सिमिलर वे वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट फॉर ऑल द सेवन डेज देर इज वन थिंग दैट यू शुड नोटिस हियर फॉर द सैटरडे एंड संडे देर इज ओनली सिंगल रेट विच इज सेवन पॉइंट नाइन एट परसेंट आई विल टेल यू वाई सी फ्रॉम ट्यूजडे टू सैटरडे मंडे आई थिंक ट्यूजडे जस्ट इमेजिन दिस इज फॉर ट्यूजडे वेडनसडे थर्सडे फ्राइडे सैटरडे एंड देर इज ओनली वन रेट अवेलेबल बट वी हैव टू टेक इट टू मंडे बिकॉज वी आर स्टार्टिंग ऑन ट्यूजडे एंड इट हैज टू गो फॉर सेवन डेज फ्रॉम ट्यूजडे द सेवन डेज एंड एट मंडे एंड दिस इज अ रेट फॉर मंडे वाई देर इज नो रेट फॉर संडे आफ्टर सैटरडे वी आर जस्ट हैविंग अ रेट ऑफ मंडे वॉट विल हैपन बिकॉज because sunday was a holiday we are going to apply the same rate as of the previous day 7.98% will be applicable for saturday and sunday so two days calculation will happen on this date understand into this much percent multiplied by 2 by 365 because two days calculation will happen now you might agree there is some mistake in that saturday's compounded value is not considered when you multiply by 2 by 365 saturday's compounded value for sunday is not considered and in fact for sunday friday's value is considered for sunday also friday's value is considered so that's something wrong in this table what you can do instead is saturday after saturday you just create another row for sunday and you apply 7.98% once again that will make sure that you are considering the saturday's interest also in the principal value that's okay but that is that will be like hardly uh, uh, like some rupees of the difference and then monday so what you did for all the seven days you did the calculation of the floating rate received so this was supposed to be received by us 153 740 but we received only this much why why because 153 740 is 317 rupees higher than our fixed payment so we had to pay this much we were we were about to receive this much but we received only this much so let's say for example 100 rupees is something that you should receive but you only received 20 rupees why because 80 was your pay payment payable amount 100 was receivable 80 was payable and then only 20 is received na then only you will receive 20 when 80 is payable so in the similar with the similar logic we will say that our fixed rate payment would have been for 7 days 153 423 receivable was this much payable was this much and that's why we received only 317 rupees now you have the fixed rate amount but this is for 7 days so this is your first leg this is your second leg both the legs are calculated and we can easily calculate the fixed rate of interest like this 153 423 divided by 10 crore multiplied by understand this is the 7 days interest so divided by 7 multiplied by 365 into 100 will give you this rate 8% so 8% per annum is the fixed rate of interest that was not given in the question so this is kind of a reverse calculation that the settlement is given to you in the previous question what happened we calculated floating rate we calculated fixed rate and then we calculated the net amount of settlement in this question floating is given net amount is given fixed was about to uh, fixed was asked to calculate so that is how you have to do this is interest rate for two days alternatively answer can also be calculated on the basis of 360 days in a year so the answer will change to that extent i hope you understood this every day we are making a calculation and the settlement is happening at the end of the 7 days i hope you have understood it it's it's easy it's not that difficult it's just the calculation that you need to understand okay we'll come to question number 30 30 and 31 are of a similar nature and this is a, a little different than the previous one so um, i will take a break and i will be back with question number 30 see you 
सो वेलकम बैक एवरी वन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी वन डायरेक्टली बिकॉज क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी हैज सम प्रॉब्लम इन इट एंड आई विल लेट यू नो अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम आफ्टर डिस्कशन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी वन बिकॉज थर्टी एंड थर्टी वन आर ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर विथ क्वाइट सम मिस्टेक्स इन क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी हाउ एवर क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी वॉज ऑल्सो आस्ड इन द एग्जाम एंड थर्टी वन वॉज ऑल्सो आस्ड इन द एग्जाम बट आफ्टर नोइंग सम मिस्टेक्स इन द क्वेश्चन uh the institute has changed some pattern and few words in question number 31 and then they asked again in november 20 so i will look on this question first ib an indian firm has its subsidiary in japan and zaki a japanese firm has its subsidiary in india understand what is happening here indian firm has a subsidiary in japan and japanese firm has a subsidiary in india and faces the following interest rate that means both the companies can borrow in both the currencies if i i am i am a company i am an indian company right you can clearly see here just a second I am an Indian firm. That means I can borrow in Indian rupees. But I have a subsidiary in Japan. That means I can buy in uh, borrow in Japanese yen also. Similar with the Zaki, which can borrow in both the currencies. Now, if I B wants to borrow and Zaki wants to borrow in I N R, the floating rates are available to them, and in Japanese yen, the fixed rates are available to them. Now, forget about the I N R and Japanese yen. That doesn't matter. What matters the most is the floating rate and the fixed rate. so ib can buy in the floating and fix as well zaki can buy in floating and fix as well so both the firm has both the types of access in the market <clears throat> zaki wishes to borrow rupee loan now zaki wishes to borrow rupee loan rupee is in floating okay and ib wishes to borrow in fixed rate so forget about the rupee and Jap uh, japanese yen focus on what zaki wants zaki wants a floating rate loan and ib wants a fixed rate loan okay the amount of loan required by both the firm is same at the current exchange rate a financial institution may arrange a swap and requires 25 basis point as its commission so this is a financial institution which can come in between them as an intermediary and it can help them to do all the processing work but it requires 25 basis point 0.25% of the total loan amount as its commission gain if any is to be shared by the firms equally now what does that mean see zaki wishes to borrow floating rate that means uh zaki is this okay zaki wishes to borrow at floating rate and it is costing him uh costing that company bplr plus 2.5% bplr is also a floating rate okay and uh, ib wishes to borrow in at this so you can clearly see that ib has to pay 2% if it goes directly in the market in the bank and borrow at fixed rate zaki will have to pay bplr plus 2.5% if it goes to the bank and borrow the money now there is another option where instead of directly going to the bank and borrowing the money at a desired rate they can enter into a swap with each other in such a manner that ib will end up it will not start but end up with a fixed rate and lower than 2% ib's wish is to borrow at fixed rate it is costing it 2% from borrowing from the bank but a swap arrangement can cost much lower than 2% at the fixed rate so ib will obviously would want to go for the swap arrangement if ib can have a fixed rate loan at a lower than 2% and similar is with the zaki zaki can take a loan at bplr plus 2.5% but instead of directly taking up from the bank at floating rate if it ends up in a swap arrangement with a floating rate at bplr plus something less then it is beneficial for the zaki as well so the question is in this swap if there is any gain it will be shared by the firms equally 
सो वॉट टाइप ऑफ गेन एंड हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द पॉसिबल गेन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज क्वालिटी स्प्रेड नाउ फोकस ऑन कपल ऑफ थिंग्स क्वालिटी स्प्रेड इट मीन्स द पॉसिबल गेन ओके हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द पॉसिबल गेन सर इट्स वेरी सिंपल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कैलकुलेट द डिफरेंस इन फ्लोटिंग रेट of both the firms it's bplr plus 0.5 and bplr plus 2.5 that means 2% is the difference between uh, what the bank is charging to ib and what the bank is charging to zaki for the floating rate okay it's because of more or less the credit rating ib's credit rating might be good and that's why the bank is charging less to ib for the floating than zaki okay but when you take uh, when you consider the ib uh, fixed rate IB and Zaki's the difference rate difference of rate between IB's fixed rate and Zaki's fixed rate is only 0.25 percent. Can I say that two and two point two five? So it is costing 0.25 percent higher to Zaki. Obviously, the credit rating of Zaki might be lower, and that's why no matter which type of rate it wants to borrow, whether it is floating or fixed, it is costing him. a high on a higher side than ib and ib is enjoying the advantage of having a good credit rating or we can say comparative advantage this comparative advantage is one word which is used normally in such type of swaps okay now let me tell you one thing ib is enjoying the advantage in both floating rate and fixed rate this is called as absolute advantage but ib has a comparative advantage in floating rate than fixed rate how come ib has more advantage in floating as compared to fixed rate ib has only 0.25% of advantage in fixed but it has 2% of advantage in floating so this is called as comparative advantage now the two things that you need to understand is uh, first of all absolute advantage that is 2% and 0.25% both ib is enjoying absolute advantage in floating rate and fixed rate because in both the rates ib is being charged at a lower interest rate by the banks so yes ib is enjoying the absolute advantage in fixed rate and floating rate so it's better to write down like this absolute advantage ib is enjoying absolute advantage in fixed and floating okay second thing ib is enjoying comparative advantage means obviously it's an absolute advantage in fixed and floating but when you compare the fixed and floating which advantage is better floating because it's giving more return to ib now the thing is in whichever uh, we can say <laughs> that's okay now we'll just go step by step so the difference between floating rate and the difference between fixed rate and again the difference between the differences of fixed and floating rate is 1.75% this is called as quality spread or we can call it as possible gain this much of the gain is possible to both the companies but out of that gain 0.25 will be taken by the uh, uh, institution the intermediary so uh, let me just write down quality spread first of all we will calculate quality spread which is called as the possible gain from the advantage uh, from the swap agreement to both the companies is or i will just write it like this quality spread is equal to difference in floating rate minus difference in fixed rate so difference in floating rate is 2 and 0.25 
that goes to 1.75% am i right out of that 0.25 will be taken by the financial institution and this 1.5 will be shared equally by both the companies that means the net gain to both the parties should be 0.75% what does that mean okay so the result of this swap is ib will have a borrowing rate lower by 0.75% ib will end up borrowing at its desired type of interest rate but the cost will be lower by 0.75% so let me just start this question in our notes with few things that i want to write first of all <coughs> quality spread is the difference between floating minus difference between absolute difference right fixed so this is 2 minus 0.25 that's 1.75 percent possible gain less commission of the institute 0.25 percent so 1.5 percent in this share of gain to ib to zaki 0.75 0.75 what does that mean it means that ib should be able to borrow at a floating uh, sorry fixed rate it wants to borrow at a fixed rate right let me just confirm once again zaki wishes to borrow at a floating rate so the zaki's wish is to borrow at a floating rate and ib wishes to borrow at fixed rate okay but just understand one thing if ib directly goes to the bank and borrow the loan at fixed rate it will cost him 2% cost it 2% and to zaki if it directly goes to borrow the floating rate loan it will cost it bplr plus 2.5% now entering into a swap transaction is only profitable if the ib can borrow fixed rate loan end up with a fixed rate loan of uh by lesser than 2% at a lesser rate than 2% and it will be 2% minus 0.75 because this will be the gain to ib in fixed rate borrowing under swap zaki's floating rate borrowing will be achieved but at bplr plus 2.5 less 0.75% that means around 1.75% so the net cost to ib will be 1.25 which is lesser than this much to zaki will be bplr plus 1.75 which is lesser than this so this much will be called as the gain to both the parties now understand one thing second condition swapping is possible only when a parity having comparative and advantage in one type of rate wishes to borrow in another type example let's say if the comparative advantage is in floating rate but the company wishes to borrow in fixed rate then only then only swapping is possible or if it has a comparative advantage in fixed rate and wishes to borrow in floating rate then only then only it will 
uh, the swapping is possible and it's very much a uh, true you can understand see out of all the four rates the best rate for the zaki to go with is the best rate for uh, sorry ib just a second the best rate for ib to go with go with is floating rate of bplr plus 0.5 because you can clearly see ib has a comparative advantage in floating and if ib directly goes with the floating itself from the market then there is no possibility of arbitrage then there is no possibility of swapping because the lowest possible rate has been already taken by you from directly from the bank then what we are going to do then what we are going to do the, the other parties will have no option so if you want this but you have an advantage on this so what will happen how the swap will happen i will tell you since you want this now but you have an advantage in this we will make you believe uh, we will conv like convince you to borrow the loan from bank at which you have a comparative advantage since you don't want that loan you can swap that with us and we will give you something that you want which is fixed right that's when the swapping is possible you have a benefit in let's say for example i will tell you you are a good relative of ambani okay and you can convince ambani for anything but the problem is you want to convince tata right but you want to convince tata then only swapping is possible i am on the other side i want to convince ambani but i cannot what i will do is i will ask you to convince ambani for me or you will convince but for yourself okay and you will swap that thing with me what i will do i will try to convince tata and then swap that thing with you then the swapping is possible but when the swapping is not possible that you want uh, you want to con you have a comparative advantage in convincing ambani and you want to convince ambani then the story is over you wanted ambani you got Am ambani you have a benefit with the ambani as well you will get it easily why i uh, where i am going to do what i am going to do i don't want to convince tata i can but i don't want to understood i also want to convince ambani you also want to convince ambani acha one more thing you have a comparative advantage in convincing ambani and you want to convince ambani story is over why you need my help then no there is no need for my help so next thing and i have a comparative advantage of tata over tata and i want to com convince tata why the hell we are going to meet we can do what we want then there is no need for swapping it is only when we cannot do what we want so your need should be fulfilled by me my need should be fulfilled by you that's when the swapping is possible so what is happening in this case is you have an advantage in floating but you want to want a fixed rate so what i will do is i will ask you to get the loan at floating because you have the advantage and swap that with me i will give you the fixed rate that you want that's when the swapping is possible understood understood one thing okay so in this case exactly the same is happening ib has an advantage in floating but it wants a loan at fixed rate and that's when the swapping will happen okay so let's come to this point mm -hmm. i will just go to this the potential gain see the interest rate differential and yen rate differential or fixed and floating rate differential is 1.75% huh am i right yes and then 0.25 will be taken by the bank and the balance will be 1.5% which will be shared by both equally which will be shared by both equally that means <clears throat> the actual cost to actual cost to ib should be 1.25% then only we can say that 0.75 is a gain to it and bplr plus 1.75% see if i can borrow directly from the market at fixed rate of 2% and i can borrow at fixed rate in swapping but at 1.25% can i say that the benefit is 0.75 yes sir and this is the benefit of 0.75 to zaki also he wanted floating he is getting floating but at much lower than the direct market rate understand this is 
the direct rate if you go to the bank and this is a swap rate if you do some transactions in the swapping so what will happen in reality both of us ib and zaki will take the exact opposite loan from the bank ib wants fixed but it will take floating rate loan and it will swap with the zaki zaki wants floating it will take fixed rate loan from the bank and it will swap with the uh, ib now how these transactions are going to happen let me explain that to you with a proper diagram so these are the two banks and uh, these are the two companies and one intermediary will be there financial institution who will take the so these are the parties now understand this is ib this is zaki these are the banks for both of us bank 1 bank 2 or the same bank also this is the financial institution or dealer you can say now what will happen it's very simple ib has a comparative advantage in floating rate loan and he wants a fixed rate loan so ib will take the floating rate loan whatever he wants exactly opposite of that should be taken from the bank so what are what is exactly going to happen we will pay interest to the bank how much at a floating rate because we have taken a floating rate loan and zaki wants floating rate loan and he will <coughs> take a fixed rate loan from the bank so to the bank respective parties will pay their own interest so that's bplr plus 0.5 and this is 2. Point, am i right 25 this much we are going to pay to the banks now just a second one thing is also sure that we are going to pay to the dealer so dealer will also take the take his commission right and the total commission to the dealer should be point okay this is better 25 understood so point 25% is the total commission to the dealer okay what can be done is both the parties will contribute equal contribution to financial institution that is 0.25 divided by 2 so what will happen both of us will pay 0.25% point sorry 0.125 1 to 5.125 so this is how much we are going to pay so zaki will pay 0.125% ib will pay 0.125% financial institution will have its own 0.25% and that's over for the financial institution now what financial institution did is he made all the arrangements now we are going to exchange so this is the major swapping part which is happening here we will pay something to zaki we will receive something from zaki if i consider from the ib's point of view and it's very easy to calculate understand one thing that if you would have borrowed directly from the bank 2% at 2% it would have cost you 2% but now it's the net payment to you the net payment by you should cost you only 1.25% only 1.25% then only you can say 0.75% is my gain so you can if you look from the ib's point of view ib has paid bplr plus 0.5 to the bank what he is going to do he doesn't want floating so the entire bplr plus 0.5 will be received back from ib uh, from zaki so let's receive it back this is very easy to find out this is the first step now the only thing remaining is this now understand from the ib's point of view he paid this much and received it back 
he paid this much and received it back that means the bplr position is now over this is over with this now we paid in total 0.125 the outflow the net outflow right now for ib is 0.125 how much should be the total outflow 1.25 that's it 1.25 we have already paid 0.125 to the dealer how much is left 1.125 so what will happen 1.125 will be paid by ib to zaki that's it this is the sto this is the end of the story and you can calculate each cash flow cash flow for each party it will end up in exactly what we wanted so let's do that first now understand i will just mark red if i'm paying that and i will just mark uh green if i'm receiving that so that it's easy for us to do the calculation so this is what i paid i'm marking it as ib paid to the bank this is what ib paid to the dealer okay now this is what ib paid to zaki and uh that's it now let's talk from the angle of receipt and this is what we received from zaki that's it we paid three items and received only once now going back to the red part consider from the zaki's angle zaki paid this much to the bank zaki paid this much to the dealer and zaki paid this one to ib and when it comes to receipt zaki received this much just do the total of all the outflows and inflows have a look for ib it is minus bplr since we have paid plus 0.5 then we paid 1.125 as well minus 1.125 then we received bplr plus 0.5 and then we paid 0.125 am i right writing all the four figures so you can clearly see that this outflow is cancelled with this outflow and the total is minus 1.25% which is lower by 7 the direct bank rate was 2% so i am at a gain of 0.75 the net cost to me is fixed i wanted that and it is lower by 0.75% that's the gain to me to ib now look from the zaki's angle zaki paid 2.25% then he received 1.125% then he paid bplr plus 0.5 and he also paid 0.125 let's do the total of all this so 2.25 plus 1.125 minus 1.125 minus okay plus 1 point so it's 2.25 plus minus plus 1.125 minus 0.125 that's 1.25 it looks like this minus 1.25 minus bplr open the bracket minus 0.5 so it will look like minus bplr minus 1.75 now you take the negative sign outside the bracket so it will be bplr plus 1.75% you can clearly see that if we would have directly gone to the bank it would have cost us bplr plus 2.25% so again we are at a gain of 0.75 so gain to both the parties this is not required in exam or oh, you can show it directly like this and this presentation is absolutely valid absolutely valid you just need to make sure that the total cost is uh you have to do one more thing apart from this you will have to show this sorry to say that but you will have to show this the net outflow should be this this should be visible that 1.25 is the total cost to ib and bplr plus 1.75 is the total cost to zaki because we want to prove that it is costing us lesser than directly going in the market so swap is costing us lesser than directly going into the market that's a gain of 0.75% and this is very easy to draw very easy to draw it's very simple first of all first step take the opposite loan from the bank whatever we want take the opposite loan from the bank second step pay the financial institution equally or whatever you have decided 
okay 60 40 then 60 40 also if you want to share the gain in 60 40 pay the commission in 60 40 as well okay once you paid this much you didn't want the floating rate third step you paid the floating receive it back the only thing left will be this much which you have to do the calculation where you have to do the calculation otherwise everything is sorted okay so this is how the question has uh, presented it's very simple sir bplr plus 0.5 just let me show you the same that we did <laughs> yeah see BPLR plus 5, BPLR plus 5, then 1.125, 1.125. The only difference is the outflow has been shown, showed positive here and presented posi in positive figure and the inflow has been presented in a negative figure in this case. We have given a different sign there. That's it. So again, BPLR plus 0.5 and 0.125 and 0.125. In this case also, you will see, uh, see, 2.25, 2.25. Then BPLR plus 0.5. This is BPLR plus 0.5. Then 1.125. This is 1.125. Then lastly 0.125. This is 0.125. So everything is according to the institute. Also, please make sure this is 1.25. The direct rate would have been 2% in this case and BPLR plus 2.25 in this case. So swap is always beneficial than the direct market rate. Candidates can also present the above swap arrangement in a different manner. In such case, they should be awarded due marks provided the solution ended up in a correct answer. So this should be the final answer. This should be visible. It is not visible with the diagram. So diagram is just for the purpose of making sure that you are doing the correct calculation and making it easy. Then you have to write it in equation and end up with an answer of 1.25 and this one. Got it? Now, summary is that first of all, swapping is possible only when a party having a comparative advantage in one type of rate wishes to borrow the other type of rate. So if you have a comparative advantage in floating, you should wish to borrow fixed. If you have an advantage in fixed, you should wish to borrow floating. So opposite should be the there. Opposite, opposite should be the story. Now what happened in question number 30? Let's come to question number 30 and find out the comparative advantage. Which party has comparative advantage in which rate? You can clearly see that if we calculate the difference, 0.25 is the difference of fixed rate and 2% is the difference of floating rate. Again, 1.75 is the difference exactly similar to what we have seen in this in the previous question. So 1.75% is the possible gain, but still the swapping is not possible in this question. Why? I will tell you. Understand that IM is having a comparative advantage in floating rate, right? I am is having comparative advantage in floating rate, then he should wish to borrow in fix. Now, I am wishes to borrow floating rate. What is happening here? I am is wishing to borrow in a rate which is already a comparative advantage to him. He has a comparative advantage with Ambani and he wants to convince the Ambani then why the hell he will need my help, the other party's help or the financial institution's help. You can do it what you want, then why you need the swap arrangement? Swap arrangement is not at all possible, sir, in this case. Although institute has done some mathematical calculation, not the logical one, and then they showed that yes, the possibility is there for uh, uh, the swapping but trust me swapping is not possible they just derived uh, the final rate that if you directly go to the market this will be the rate gain should be this much so swap should be this much you can try you will not come to this point that LIBOR is the only net interest for the IM and 3.75 is the only net interest to the JI you try your calculations you will not come to this point because of the comparative advantage it's very simple sir that's what I'm saying. If you have a comparative advantage over Ambani and you want to convince Ambani itself, then there is no need for the other parties. It should be opposite. 
that's why the swap is not possible this was the wrong question asked in the exam i will tell you it was in may 2019 old syllabus understand it was asked in exam in may 2019 then it was given again in the mock test paper of 21 21 and 21 you can see 21 21 and 21 so it is repeated that means the first time it was asked in the may 2019 old syllabus where the question was wrong after that they made some correction and asked again in november 2020 and that was the correct question so forget about this one i took it in the compiler because i wanted to explain that this is how can this is this can happen in your exam also so whenever the question is wrong it seems wrong make sure you are solving it to the maximum possible with whatever notes that you want to give but don't skip the question if you don't write anything in the question you will not get the marks okay so the answer is little wrong in this they have said that yes it is possible but it's not possible you can try by yourself now comes the question number 32 it is again an interesting question we'll love it so again this is going to be an interesting question it's very much similar to the previous question but little different in terms of uh, some specifications have a look a limited is considering 50 crores 3 years interest rate swap the company is interested in borrowing a floating rate borrowing at floating rate however due to its good credit rating it has a comparative advantage over lower rated company in fixed rate market that is what we wanted i told you that the uh, what we can say is swapping is possible when we have a comparative advantage in one market that is fixed rate in this case and we want to borrow in other market which is floating rate so it is possible in this question it can borrow at a fixed rate of 6.25 and a floating rate of my bor plus 0.75 so a limited 6.25 and my bor plus 0.75 so fixed and floating rate presently my bor is 5.25% but it is expected to change in 6 months time due to political situation in the country x limited the other company this was a limited now this is an x limited <laughs> an intermediary bank agreed to arrange a swap so this is intermediary financial institution dealer we can say okay so the bank will offset the swap risk with a country b b limited counterparty sorry counterparty b limited a comparative lower credit rated company so the credit rating of this company is not that good which could borrow at a fixed rate of 7.25 you can see that and uh, my bor plus 1.25 so first of all first condition is fulfilled that uh, flow we uh, the comparative advantage market and the market that in which we want to borrow the money should be different then let's take the difference between fixed rate which comes to 1% in this case and the difference between floating rate comes to 0.50% so the total swap that is possible is 0.50% so this is the quality spread or we can say the possible gain from all the swap okay uh 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 uh, uh we are here right now x limited would charge 12 lakh rupees per year as it's free from fee from each party from each party the commission amount will be 12 lakh for x limited just understand this is huge in the previous question it was 0.25% which would which would have paid from this but now this is given in terms of rupees mr finn the cfo of a limited this company desires that a limited should receive 60% of any arbitrage saving 60% of this is 0.30% and 40% is 0.20% so a limited will keep a gain of 0.30 and b limited will keep a gain of 0.20 okay before payment of 12 lakh rupees of the fees from the swap as a limited enjoying higher credit rating because of the higher credit rating a limited is like i need 60% of the gain man any fees paid to the bank are tax allowable any fees paid to the bank are tax allowable the applicable tax rate is 30% so 12 lakh after tax if you want to calculate 12 lakh into 0.7% <coughs> it Like forty thousand something, yeah, right. Nine lakh. 
एट लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड इवेल्युएट वेदर द प्रपोजल इज बेनिफिशियल फॉर बोथ द पार्टीज और नॉट यस सर इट इज बेनिफिशियल फॉर बोथ द पार्टीज द फर्स्ट आंसर इज वेरी ईजी ए लिमिटेड बी लिमिटेड डिफरेंस बिटवीन फिक्स रेट इज वन परसेंट डिफरेंस इन द फ्लोटिंग रेट इज पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट एंड द पॉसिबल गेन इज पॉइंट फाइव जीरो परसेंट फ्रॉम द स्वैप प्रपोजल ओके सो दैट्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन देन assuming that my bar was to increase evaluate whether the proposal is beneficial for both the parties or not so we have to evaluate it is not beneficial because of one reason prima facie it seems that the po- swapping is possible but it is not beneficial because of some other reason have a look let's take the first party a limited now saving on the amount of loan 50 crore into 0.50% this is the total saving to both the parties which is 25 lakh now understand that a limited wants to keep 60% of the saving which comes to 15 lakh clear post tax benefit that means he is going to pay tax on this because this is a profit 15 lakh is a profit we will pay tax on this so post tax pen- post tax benefit is 10 lakh 50000 charges payable to x limited it should be charges i will make the correction later on to x limited is 12 lakh and post tax it is 8 lakh 40000 so instead of writing this, this this much they should have simply wrote like this uh the share in profit is 15 lakh then 12 lakh rupees will be the expense 3 lakh is the net profit tax on this is 30% which is 90000 and the balance is 2 lakh 10000 this is the simplest way instead of confusing so the net benefit to party a is 2 lakh 10000 let's talk about the other party evaluation from the point of view of b limited it's very simple sir out of this 25 lakh 40% will be kept by b limited so 10 lakh gain but 12 lakh rupees will be his fees so the loss is 2 lakh into 30% so 70% will be left that is 1 lakh 40000 so the loss to b is 1 lakh 40000 it was the simplest of the possible question right thus the proposal of swap will leave b limited in loss of 1 lakh 40000 hence the proposal is not beneficial for all the parties at all it is beneficial for the single party but not for b limited and if it is not beneficial for b limited the swap will not be possible why it is not possible because a limited would agree b limited would not agree and if this party does not agree then the entire swap agreement will have to be thrashed out so what will happen the charges of beneficiary uh, the charges of intermediary has to be reduced that's what uh, uh, should be done and in fact out of 24 lakh rupees of the charges see you can see 12 lakh and 12 lakh is charging uh 24 lakhs to both the parties so my my view is out of this 24 lakh 60 40 should be done so uh 60% that means he should charge 14 lakh 40000 14 lakh 40000 to a limited and the balance of 9 lakh 6000 60000 to b limited so what will happen i will tell you for a limited the profit is 15 the charges are 14.4 the balance is 0.6 for b limited the profit is 10 the share in the profits and the charges are 9.6 the balance is 0.40 so after tax it will cost them 42000 of the gain and 28000 of the gain so both the parties will have some benefit but what is happening in this case is all the benefit is taken over by a limited itself nothing has been given to b limited if you do the total 2 lakh 10000 and 1 lakh 40000 the total will come to somewhere uh, 60 70000 70 into 70% no 70 70000 is okay i think this is also coming to 70000 so the net benefit to all of the parties is 70000 but that's what is happening wrong here instead of equally or or distributing the benefits and the charges in 60 40 what they have done is he has taken the gain of 60% but the charges of 50% only that's where the entire thing went wrong otherwise possibilities are there the only uh, obstacle in this entire uh, agreement is the charges of mr intermediary okay now coming over to the second part of the question let's read that first 
assuming that mybor was to increase to 5.75% immediately after political crisis is over and shall remain constant for the entire period of swap what does that mean it means that today the mybor is 5.25% when we are entering into a swap agreement but understand but it is expected to change in 6 months due to political situation so after 6 months we were exactly expecting that the mybor will change and that happened in reality after 6 months when the political crisis got over the mybor increased to 0.5 increased by 0.5% to 5.75 okay so it shall look like this if you draw timeline na so 1 2 2 1 2 3 4 so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 what does that mean half yearly period sir one year two year and three year okay the interest rate is my bor is 5.25 today and we said that right now the political crisis is going on and after 6 months the political crisis is expected to get over and at that time the mybor will change and it actually changed in the second part of the question to 5.75 got it i hope i'm right <clears throat> okay now and our loan rate was this much immediately after the political crisis is over and shall remain constant for the entire period of swap that means once it has increased to 5.75 it will remain for the entire 3 period 3 years period evaluate the present value of savings from the swap for a limited how much was the saving for a limited sir total saving was 25 lakh out of which 60% was kept by a limited which was 15 lakhs but that was per annum and now we have interest payment semi annually so if 15 lakh is for per annum see if 15 lakh is for per annum can i say 7.5 lakhs will be the saving every 6 months to a limited see in the previous part itself the total saving was 0.5% saving on the amount of loan 50 crore into 0.50 percent. That's 25 lakh. Out of that 25 lakh, 60 percent was the share of A Limited, which is 15 lakhs. But that is per annum. All these rates are per annum. The difference is per annum. The potential saving is also per annum. But if we are making a payment for semi annually, so 15 lakh divided by two comes to 7 lakh 50 thousand. That's going to be the savings every year in interest. and understand that the interest rate applicable for this is not this this one it is decided at the beginning so th at this rate you are going to discount 7.5 if you have to but let me just finish it first what exactly will be the rate i will just tell you it will not be the my bor only see mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> now we have to calculate the present value okay my question to you is present value my question to you is what is the what is exactly the cost of floating rate or rate to you how what should be the discounting rate very simple sir if you would have directly purchased or borrowed the money a limited if you would have directly borrowed the money from the bank it would have cost you my bor plus 0.75 but please understand this is not the actual cost that we are going to bear we will be <coughs> we will be paying something lesser than this see the total saving is 50% understand 
and out of that 60% of the saving is kept by us that is 0 0.30 can i say that out of 0 0.50 60% means 0.30% should be the saving to me under swap if i directly go to the market it will cost me my bar plus 0 0.75 and if what will be what will be the cost to me under swap it should be lesser than 0 0.30 and then only i can say that this is my benefit so if you will do the calculation it will come to my bar plus 0 0.45 0 0.3% less than this rate so the cost to me for all this borrowing is my bar plus 0.45% and the my bars are here these are the my bars so for present value annuity or sorry for the present value factor the rates will be my bar plus 0.45 not 0.75 first of all this is the cost that you will have to bear so if you will add 0.45 in each of them it will be 5.70 6.20 25 and uh, 20 yeah 6.20 6.20 6.20 6.20 okay now understand that this is going to be the rate to discount 7.5 lakh 7.5 lakh is the saving for every six month true but these are the rates per annum on a per annum basis so we have to convert the rate also into six months rate so it will be 2.85 3 3.10 3.10 3.10 3.10 3.10 so all the rates will be this so one point these are the rates that will be applicable to discounts the savings we have to calculate the present value of all the savings six months payment that's why we have taken 7.5 lakhs now understand the calculation on the next page see six half yearly period six months total saving is seven lakh fifty thousand for six months 15 lakhs for one year and the discounting rates are like this for first year it is 5.7 percent because for the first six months the my bar was lower and after six months the my bar increased by 0.5 percent again this is calculated as 5.25 plus 0.45 this is the swap rate that was applicable to us and this is 5.75 plus 0.45 after the increase now although they have given per annum rate here but this discounting factor rate is calculated as 1 divided by 1.0285.972 okay now how will you calculate this discounting rate 0 0.941 this should be for the second period half of 6.2 is 1 divided by 1.031 to the power 2 so when you keep it to the power 2 you will get 0 0.941 two times discounting with 3.1 percent however i am not satisfied with the answer because of that i will tell you why so uh, first of all let me uh, just complete this calculation 6.2 now how to calculate this 0.912 it's very simple sir 1 divided by 1.031 to the power 3 now then to the power 4 5 6 7 sorry 4 5 6 that's it 2 3 4 5 6 okay <clears throat> this is how you are going to calculate the discounting factors although they have given it as in a per annum but the calculations are correct but the main problem is that what is happening is that for the first period the discounting rate was according to 2.85 but what is happening to this cash flow they are discounting it with 3.1 and then 3.1 for both the six months let me just write it properly for this three point uh, for this period and for this period 3.1 and 3.1 which i think should not be the case it should be like every cash flow which will go through this six months should be discounted with 2.85 percent because at that time the rate was 2.85 percent these are the rates after the six months now after this period 6.2 was discovered or 5.75 was discovered so till this point only the cash flow should be discounted with 3.1 percent but beyond before this it should be discounted with 2.85 doesn't matter which cash flow it is whether this is the cash flow this is this is this is this is but what institute has done is for this cash flow they have taken 3.1 and 3.1 in the first period also for this one they have taken 3.1 3.1 and then 3.1 
so for all the periods all the other cash flows they have taken 3.1% as a discounting rate for the first 6 months i'm little not satisfied with this but if the similar question comes in exam then follow what institute has done for the purpose of marks so now you can easily calculate that 750000 you are going to save every 6 uh, months these are going to be the discounting rate and in terms of present value you are saving 4,50,754 years 4050754 years so i can easily say that every year's average cost is 1350 250 and you have to pay only 12 lakh rupees per year so still it is beneficial for you because we have not considered 12 lakh rupees in 7 lakh 50000 we have to uh, reduce that cost right the interest rate swap is estimated to produce interest rate savings with a present value of this much borrowing uh, this much relative to borrowing floating rate directly what does that mean since we have not borrowed the money directly at a floating rate and went for the swap arrangement this has benefited us over a period of 3 years the present value of those saving is 40 lakh 50750 however we have to pay 12 lakh rupees each year for this saving so we, the, that 12 lakh into 3 we can say 36 lakhs should be deducted from this and still it is beneficial for us 40 50 750 so this is the main answer i hope you understood it it's just that whatever the savings that you are having because of the swaps and not directly going to the bank to borrow money calculate the present value of that on the given market rate simple enough okay they have made some calculations here i have not read this and it is not at all required first of all the only thing which was required is this 0.45 adding 0.45 it means that 0.3 will be our saving so we are going to add 0.45 in the my bor so it will be 5.70 for the first 6 months and then 6.20 for the rest of the period after that they again calculated interest savings of 7 lakh 50000 instead of all this calculation they should straight away take 15 lakh and divided by 2 and then the rest of the calculations have been explained good sir good 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 question number 33 is going to be the next question now let let's have a look a financial institution has entered into an interest rate swap with a company x under the terms of the swap it receives who the financial institution is going to receive 10% per annum fix and pays a 6 month libor so please understand on a principal of 10 million dollars for 5 years okay and that is 6 months libor payments are made every 6 months so please understand till this point it's very necessary important one these are let's say 5 years hmm 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and then half yearly okay so what was happening you are a financial institution and you have entered into a swap agreement with other party in which he is going to pay you 10% per annum and you will be paying libor to him am i right libor okay so receive pay gain or loss whatever principal and gain again understand what was happening for the first 5 payments 10% you will receive here you will pay libor here 10% you will receive here you will pay libor 10 libor 10 libor now 10 libor understand what happened next everything went very perfectly till this point but when it came we came to this third year end 1 2 3 4 
five. You can say that half of the settlement is done, half period of the swap is completed, half is pending. Now, when we are standing at this date, this date, so logically, what should happen? We should receive ten percent and we will pay LIBOR. But the other party who was paying ten percent to us defaulted on this date. He didn't pay ten percent, and we also obviously didn't pay LIBOR. But he defaulted on the next payments as well. Means he didn't pay from that date onwards. So obviously there will be some profit or loss. If there is a gain on this part, and if there has to be a gain on the future also, we have lost that gain because of the default of the party. Now understand the question. Suppose company X defaults on the sixth payment date, that means the end of the year three, when the interest rate with semi-annual compounding is eight percent per annum for all the maturities. Right now the interest rate is eight percent. Understand? It is eight percent on this date. For all the maturities, it will be eight percent. But understand, the payment that you have to make here depends upon the LIBOR of the previous payment date previous uh, payment date so when you are when you are making a payment here now this libor is already calculated at this point so this today's libor is applicable for the next 6 months so this libor is of this date so this libor the libor here would have been of this date now understand uh 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 ha uh, huh. what is the loss to the financial institution assume that the 6 months libor was 9% per annum halfway through year 3 so halfway through year 3 is this point and it was 9% at this point this means that we were supposed to receive 10% on this date and pay 9% on this date it depends upon the previous date right so there was a planned uh profit of 1% the notional the planned gain of of 1% the notional principal was how much 10 million dollars so the principal amount is 10 million dollars so how much will be the total gain please understand this is a per annum rate this is a per annum rate you are making a 6 monthly settlement this is a per annum gain so when you will calculate the amount it has to be for 6 months so 10 million into 1% is 1 lakh into uh, 1 by 2 for 6 months so this will be 50000 dollar this was the profit that we were about to make but we didn't make it because we lost it because of the default by the other party he didn't pay us 10% we didn't pay him 9% we received uh we lost this 1% of the gain that means we lost this $50000 and the same happened for the all the future maturities but at that time the rate was 8% so understand we were about to receive 10% for all the future dates and pay 9 per uh, sorry 8% now so the planned profit was also we can say the profit that we missed is 2% this is our loss when you calculate it on 10 million it will come to let's see 10 million into 2% 2 lakhs divided by 2 because of the 6 months so it will be 1 1 1 1, 1 lakh so this is what we have lost because of the default of the other party now we have to calculate the present value 50000 we are standing at this date please understand at the end of the year 3 we cannot go back so we are standing here 50000 is already at today's price so it will be multiplied by 1 but then for rest of the 1 lakh or 1 lakh dollars you have to discount it to calculate the present value and the discount rate should be the ongoing market rate which is 8% so you are again going to discount this with 4% half yearly have a look on the final answer now see floating rate payment at zeroth point that means this is the third year end was 9% this was your payment but fixed rate fixed receipt was 10% you were about to gain by 1% which you actually lost this is called as loss of a profit due to default that will come to 50000 then 1 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh 1 lakh now what are you going to do 50000 is the today's value so that's why multiplied by 1 but rest of the figures you have to discount it by 
फोर परसेंट बिकॉज एट परसेंट वॉज द गोइंग रेट फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स इट इज गोइंग टू बी फोर परसेंट डिस्काउंट दिस एंड यू हैव द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू सो दिस इज द लॉस इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू फोर लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड नाइन नाइनटी डॉलर्स वी वुड वी वुड हैव अर्न दिस मच वी वुड हैव गेन्ड दिस मच बिकॉज ऑफ दिस स्वैप इफ द पार्टी वुड नॉट हैव डिफॉल्टेड एंड दैट्स वॉट द drawback of the interest rate swap is for the forward rate agreement also for the interest rate swap also because these are over the counter market traded so there is no margin required in this case and that's why there are chances that the parties can default if there is a loss so that was happening see understand from the point of view of the other company if the rate was 9% throughout he was losing money every 6 months and at the end of the third year he decided to default because he cannot afford to lose it further see and that's what he his loss has become our loss of profit our loss of profit we didn't lose actually but we lost the profit that we would have earned got it okay sir last question <coughs> after that there are two more questions okay have a look on this euro loan bank is a, has a differential advantage in issuing variable rate loan variable floating variable which changes floating rate is something which changes but wishes to avoid the income risk associated with such loan but see when this word but is included that means there is a possibility of a uh, swap gain because he wish he is having an advantage in the floating rate but he wants to avoid the income risk uh, associated with such loan that means he wants to shift to fixed rate he has an advantage in floating he wants to shift in fixed yes possible the gain is possible swap is possible currently bank has a portfolio of 25 million dollar euro loans with prime lending rate of with plr plus 150 basis point so it's as good as 1.5% reset monthly plr is currently 4% monthly plr currently 4% so it's actually 5.5% if you currently if you calculate the current rate it's 5.5% 4 plus 1.5 okay ib this is the another party an investment bank has arranged for euro loan to swap into a fixed rate payment of 6.5 see now this is a very interesting question because in this case we are not the borrower we are the investors or we can say depositors or lenders so we are earning this much of the interest right now so let's focus on this since we are the investors or we can say lender right now the risk to us is the fall in the interest rate R and in fact we have a portfolio with of a floating rate with plr plus 1.50 percent what does that mean it means that we are earning this much because we have lent the money to someone else that someone else or the other party is giving us this much of the money so we are earning an interest at a floating rate but we are scared of falling interest rate so if the flybor or the floating rate falls we will receive lesser interest income and that's what we want to avoid we want to make sure that the interest income is fixed for the next period and then it doesn't matter where the floating rates are going according to the bank floating rate is about to fall and due to this the fall in interest rate will lead to the fall in the income that they are going to receive because of the floating rate associated with the amount now what will happen in swapping in swapping we will give the floating rate and receive the fixed rate so <clears throat> this is an investment bank this is to them we have given the loan okay and we are receiving floating so under the swap what will happen we will pay floating because we have received floating from them we are the investor we will receive interest we will pay that to them and we will receive fixed so we want to receive fixed amount every year or every 6 months and we are ready to pay whatever the floating are why we are ready to pay floating because we know that the interest rates are going to go down so the the more it will fall the lesser will be our floating payment 
the lesser will be the income received from the investors and uh, or from the borrowers and then lesser will be the payment and we will receive the fixed amount now understand what the question is saying ib and investment bank has arranged the euro loan to swap into a fixed rate payment of 6.5% so uh, I, i think i will just uh, uh, clarify this with a proper diagram so that it becomes very easy for you to uh, calculate so these are the borrowers and this is the bank and this is what we are we are this in the company in this question so we are going to receive floating rate of plr plus 1.5 percent right and we are scared of this thing that the rise uh, interest rate will go down and we will receive lesser amount every year from the borrowers so we arranged a swap agreement with the party so there is another party ib who is ready to do the swap arrangement with us in that what will happen whatever we are going to receive from the borrowers we will pay it back to ib so plr plus 1.5 will be paid back to ib and ib is ready to pay 6.5% to us fixed now in this case what might be the situation we are scared of the falling interest rate and ib might be thinking that the interest rates are going to rise since interest rates are going to rise he is going to receive more income according to him and according to him he is going to pay lesser amount so both parties have opposite view okay now uh okay if euro loan agrees to this that mean euro loan is the bank what amount of interest is received and given in the first month what will be the swap arrangement in the first month in the first month and uh, this is monthly or six monthly let me just calculate it is monthly not six monthly and the total amount is 25 million euros now understand that the rate is 4% right now so the total will go to 5.5% this is what you will pay to ib and this is what you will receive from ib so 25 million euro multiplied by this much into 1 by 12 so that you can convert the annual payment into monthly understand 25 million euros into 5.5% divided by 12 this is what you will pay to ib because you promised him to pay the floating amount which you had received from the borrower let's say then what amount he will receive euro bank will receive it's fixed 6.5% so 25 million 6.5% divided by 12 we are going to receive from ib for the first month now second part further assume that plr increased by 200 basis point if the plr increases by 200 basis point what will happen sir plr increases by 200 basis point 2 plus 1.5 sorry increases means right now it is 4 it will become 6 so 6 plus 1.5 that means 7.5 percent we will have to pay and 6.5 percent we will receive there will be a loss why loss because we were expecting a fall in the plr and actually the plr went up and that's why we will be in a loss so see 7.5 percent can you calculate this 7.5 percent is nothing but 4 plus 2 Six percent plus one point five percent fixed. So that was seven point five. You are going to pay seven point five percent twenty five million into seven point five divided by twelve. This is what we will be paying the next month and receiving the same thing because we have agreed on this fixed payment. So the receipt every month will be fixed to one thirty five four one six at six point five percent, but the payment every month will vary. in the first month it was like this so if i just make it clear to you in the first month we paid 5.5 and received 6.5 in the next month we paid 7.5 and received 6.5 so there was a profit of 1% here i think yeah and there was a loss of 1% here and it will keep on changing so the floating rate will keep on changing so that's that's what the question was asking it was very very easy rtp november 2011 okay sir we are we have finished with this one more question is left in the interest rate swaps 
let me just go through that question that we had skipped earlier because it ha it was uh, on the swapping which was the question let me just check it in the concept sheet <laughs> yeah this is question number 17 swapping housing loan so it is different kind of a swapping housing loan question number 17 let's read that question this is an interesting question not that difficult please understand not that difficult it's just a present value item that we are going to do in this you have a housing loan with one of india's top housing finance companies you have taken a loan from the company housing loan the amount outstanding today is 189540 this is what you have the principal amount outstanding you have now paid an installment okay now you have made a paid an installment your next installment falls due a year later 189540 of one year after this you will have to make a payment there are five more installments to go each being 50000 2 3 4 5 every installment will be of 50000 okay now can we calculate the interest rate yes sir it is possible since 189540 is the total principal outstanding and 50000 is the annuity we can easily calculate the interest rate by uh, interpolation or irr method let's go ahead another housing finance company has offered to take over this loan on a 7 year repayment basis they are saying that there is an another company who entered into picture and they came to you they said that we will take this loan for you we will make the payment to the bank you don't have to do that but you make us the payment for 7 years so we are increasing your installments or we we can say we are increasing your duration by 2 more years for the same principal amount so your loan of 189540 will become our loan we will make the payment to this bank for the next 5 years which is 50000 but now you pay us every year for the next 7 years not 5 but 7 years okay you will be required to pay 36408 in this case this is a pretty good question man question number 17 so the right now one uh how much 89540 One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Every year, original EMI is fifty thousand. Okay. But the other bank is saying that you forget about the loan with that bank. We will make the payment to the other bank. and you pay us 1 2 3 4 5 six and 7 in 7 installments right and that will be 36408 so you pay us 36408 pretty good question okay so as good as 189 540 Okay what's what else is given in this question You will be required to pay with the first installment falling a year later at the same time the processing fee is 3% of the amount taken over so apart from that you will be required to pay 3% extra today itself that's the cost to you man That's around 5686.20 and what else For swapping, you will have to pay twelve thousand rupees to the first company. So again, this is a loss to you. See, you will be paying five six eight six to the second company, who is giving you the loan of seven years. So this is a loss. Again, twelve thousand rupees is to be paid to the first company because you want to shift the loan to the other uh, other company. Okay. So this is your total cost. So today the outflow is seventeen six eighty six point two zero. Okay. 
what exactly the question wants should you swap the loan should you swap the loan how will you decide the present value annuity factor of 10% is given to you present value annuity factor of 8% is also given to you what are you going to do it's very simple sir find out the interest rate in both find out the interest rate right now whatever you are paying and the interest rate in this plus this cost interest rate in this plus this cost then you can decide it easily 3% to ex exactly the cost you are paying so we have to do the irr method in order to calculate the interest rate in this and the concept is very simple sir first present value of annuity is equal to annuity into present value annuity factor okay then that is for a rate at 5 years in this case it's 5 years so 189540 is equal to 50000 into present value annuity factor so it comes to 3.7908 is equal to present value annuity factor at r for 5 years now you have to find out a rate which a rate which is uh, the total of the present value factor for the 5 years of which is 3.7908 and if you remember it's the 10% i can easily calculate that you can you have been given with the same here 3.791 so if you round it off to three decimals it is 3.791 now you tell me which is the rate it's it's directly given in the question at 10% for 5 years the annuity factor is 3.791 so the interest rate that you are paying in this loan right now is 10% okay now what's happening in the second part the question is should you swap the loan and in the second part in the second part you can see that 36408 is the installment for 189540 so if the bank will give you this much of the money just imagine that bank will give you this much of the money 189540 and for that purpose they are charging 36408 right but if you have to pay this much of the expenses what will happen what happens practically is instead of giving this much of the loan bank will give you the loan by deducting these expenses so you will receive lesser amount of loan what will happen you will receive 189 540 minus and minus both these expenses that is 17 686 so how much amount you have you will receive it's like 171854 but still you will pay the same amount of emi understood you sh you cannot say that since you are paying us lesser amount of loan you will charge lesser amount of uh, in emi the emi will not reduce emi is calculated on the basic loan value 189540 let's take it this way that we will give you 189540 and then you start paying 36408 also you pay us this much of the processing charges today itself so out of that 189540 you will pay me 17686 17686 that means automatically we will deduct na we will pay you the lesser amount of loan itself now what is happening you are paying the 36408 of the emi the same emi which was applicable for 189 now for 171 now there is the problem had there been no processing charges and all these charges you would have paid 36408 for 189540 have a look you can clearly see that the new interest rate for 189540 at 36408 this is annuity this is present value the present value annuity factor is coming to 5.206 which is matching with this that means the new rate of interest is 8% isn't it good yes sir it's good since at present you are paying 10% interest in the new loan you will be paying only 8% but that is only when there are no charges there are no charges of 12000 and uh, 3% of the amount taken over right but when you include the charges what will happen you will receive lesser amount of loan if they would have paid us paid you so this is going to be the cash calculation now 189540 minus 12000 minus 586 5686 so the same amount of emi is calculated at a lesser amount of loan and now you calculate the 
इंटरेस्ट रेट यू कैन इजीली कैलकुलेट द इंटरेस्ट रेट बाय कीप लाइक बाय फर्स्ट टेकिंग लेट्स से टेन परसेंट एंड देन टेकिंग एलेवन परसेंट देन इंटरपोलेटिंग बोथ ऑफ देम एंड द आंसर विल बी टेन पॉइंट नाइन फोर सेवन आई एम नॉट डूइंग द इंटरपोलेशन नाउ वी हैव सीन लॉट ऑफ लॉट्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन सो द आई आर आर विल कम टू टेन टेन पॉइंट नाइन फोर सेवन परसेंट सो प्रैक्टिकली दिस इज हैपनिंग राइट नाउ यू आर पेइंग टेन परसेंट द न्यू इंटरेस्ट रेट लुक्स लाइक एट परसेंट बट इट इज एक्चुअली टेन पॉइंट नाइन फोर सेवन परसेंट एंड द डिफरेंस ऑफ टू पॉइंट नाइन फोर सेवन इज ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ दोज टू चार्जेस सेवनटीन थाउजेंड टोटल दिस ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड एंड फाइव सिक्स एट सिक्स सेवनटीन सिक्स एटी सिक्स सिंस इंटरेस्ट रेट्स ऑन एग्जिस्टिंग लोन इज टेन परसेंट वाइल प्रपोज लोन इज दिस मच बाई डिडक्टिंग द एक्सपेंसिस इज टेन पॉइंट नाइन फोर सेवन परसेंट एंड प्रपोज लोन इज मोर एक्सपेंसिव इट इज नॉट एडवाइजेबल टू स्वैप एंड दिस हैपन्स इन द प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ आई टेल यू दे विल शो यू दिस कैलकुलेशन एंड देन द हिडन चार्जेस विल बी द प्रोसेसिंग वन सो वॉट विल हैपन अल्टीमेटली इट्स कॉस्टिंग यू मोर ना मै एंड पॉइंट नाइन फोर सेवन परसेंट यू आर पेइंग मोर एंड दे विल शो यू दैट यू आर सेविंग टू परसेंट make sure that you are aware of this this is called as swapping this is also a part of swapping swapping the loan so basically you are swapping the bank right now the loan is with this bank for 5 years then the loan will be with this bank for 7 years and then they are saying that this bank is saying that you are paying 10% there you will pay only 8% here that's the processing charges please pay us that will cost you 10.947% man that's what you need to consider that's it okay so one question is left now the all the questions from the interest rate risk management is over one question from the derivatives chapter is left and that's very easy let's finish it as soon as possible yeah this one the last question question number 67 can we read it understand that uh, till now you have been uh, solving the questions on the interest rate swaps now in this question there is a different kind of a swapping but it is a swapping so you will be paying something and receiving something TMC Holding Limited this is from the derivative chapter has a portfolio of shares of diversified companies valued at 400 crore you have an investment of 400 crore enters into a swap arrangement with non bank on the terms that it will get 1.15% quarterly on notional principal of 400 crore in exchange of return on the portfolio which is exactly tracking the sensex which is presently 21600 so understand the situation we are tmc holding we have invested in the market of 400 crore okay and we have invested in such a manner that our return is exactly equal to the return of the sensex so our portfolio is exactly tracking the sensex so whatever the return of the sensex is will be the return of our 400 crore now we have entered into a swap arrangement swap arrangement let's say for example 2% is the return for sensex then 2% will be the return for our portfolio okay so we have entered into a swap arrangement or let me just clear few things so whatever will be the return of sensex in percentage will be the return in percentage on 400 crore okay now tmc holding has entered into a swap arrangement with non bank in which what is going to happen i will just show you how the swap thing is going to work we will pay non bank this return that we are earning on our portfolio and we will receive a fixed amount of 1.15% on 400 crore quarterly 1.15% quarterly on notional principal of 400 crore so can you just explain me why tmc holding is giving up his return for the fixed return of 1.15% first of all this is going to be floating return every quarter the sensex return will change 
which will mean that the return on the 400 crore will change and we are whatever the return will be we will pay it back to non bank and every quarter we are going to get 1.15% on 400 crore so the receipt is fixed 1.15% it's fixed but the payment is different every quarter why we are doing it what might be the reason it's very simple sir we are expecting that the sensex values will fall we are the investor I understand we are the investor investor always believe that the interest rate will go down and this is the risk in this case sensex will go down if the sensex goes down there will be a loss here and which will be a loss here which will be a loss on the 400 crore which means we will give them the loss giving them the loss is exactly what does exactly it means it means that taking money from them so in this case also when we say that we are paying loss that means we are receiving cash flow in this case also receiving cash flow so both in both the cases we will be receiving cash flows obviously sensex if sensex goes down the return might be lesser even if it goes up we are believing that the return will not be more than 1.15% what if the return is only 0.5% in return that means 0.5% on 400 crore that means we will pay 0.5% and we will receive 1.15% so all in all depends upon the sensex now different values of the sensex will be given opening and closing values of the sensex will be given you have to find out the return closing minus opening divided by opening is the sensex return that becomes the or return of our portfolio on 400 crore which will be paid by us and this is the fixed amount received that's it it's very very easy okay calculate the net payment to be received or paid at the end of each quarter if the sensex turns out to be like this 21 21 22 21 so at present it is this this becomes the opening this is closing then this becomes the opening closing then this becomes the opening closing opening closing this is how you have to do the calculation i am doing it here have a look first of all from 0 to 1 4 we have will uh, put a column then we will write down the sensex values and then we will find out the return see the return between these two is this much 1.2037 how to calculate that 21,860 minus 21,600 divided by 21,600. This is exact return. No annu annual or quarterly conversions are required in this. 21,860 minus 21,600 divided by 21,600 into 100. 1.2037. So understand that this is the Sensex return and this automatically becomes the return on our portfolio. 1.1.2037 now our portfolio return will always will be equal to 1.2037 because the beta of the portfolio is one man now calculate for 1.2037 percent of 400 crore 400 into 1.2037 percent that's 4.848 see 8148 how did we calculate this simply percentage multiplied by 400 crore so this is going this is what we earned and we are paying this is payable we said that whatever is the return on our portfolio we will pay it to you you pay us 1.15 percent fix what is the 1.15 percent 400 crore into 1.15 percent that's 4.6 crore fix right now understand so we pay we will pay this and we will receive this so net is the payment in this case because we are paying more 4.8 crore is the payment 4.6 crore is the receipt but what happened in the second case sensex went down there is a loss in sensex and we will pay loss to them see paying loss means cash inflow paying profit means cash outflow if there is a profit to me and i paid that to you it's a cash outflow to me but if there is a loss to me and i pay that to loss means you are bearing the loss for me you pay me back 
बिकॉज आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू बियर द लॉस ना सो दैट विल बी अ कैश इन फ्लो सो फोर पॉइंट सिक्स प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड फोर पॉइंट सिक्स वन पॉइंट फोर सिक्स सो इधर वे यू कैन डू इट लाइक दिस माइनस वन पॉइंट फोर सिक्स फोर जीरो माइनस फोर पॉइंट सिक्स सो सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स फोर जीरो विल बी द कैश इन फ्लो आई विल रिसीव दिस आई विल रिसीव दिस वन एज वेल बिकॉज आई एम पेइंग यू द लॉस सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज अ कैश इन फ्लो इन द सेकेंड केस देर इज अ देर इज एन इंक्रीज इन द सेंसेक्स सो द सेंसेक्स इज गिविंग यू गुड रिटर्न बिकॉज ऑफ दैट देर इज अ नेट आउट फ्लो आई एम पेइंग फाइव पॉइंट फाइव आई हैर्न मोर ऑन द पोर्टफोलियो आई एम पेइंग मोर फाइव पॉइंट फाइव रिसीविंग फोर पॉइंट सिक्स इन द नेक्स्ट केस अगेन देर इज अ लॉस सो आई विल पे यू द लॉस आई विल पे द स्वैप पार्टी वी विल पे द स्वैप पार्टी दिस लॉस सो दैट मीन्स दिस इज आर कैश इन फ्लो दिस इज अगेन आर कैश इन फ्लो द टोटल विल एड अप don't write to don't try to write down plus minus sign these plus minus signs are related to uh, cash inflow and outflow if the minus is there that means cash outflow plus is there that means cash inflow understood the swapping it's very simple sir i just swapped my return on the portfolio with the with the other party in exchange of the fixed return i swapped the variable return because every quarter the return will be different and i told him you take the return on my portfolio you give me 1.15% for fix that means if the returns are more it's your benefit because you are going to pay me fixed amount but if the returns are less it's my benefit because you will get lesser return and i will get more smooth i think interest rate swap is one of the best thing to solve because it doesn't involve a lot of calculation technicalities it's very simple give and take obviously every calculation was different but it's i think fun to solve the questions of interest rate swaps so with this we finish our chapter of interest rate risk management sir in the next chapter we are going to start with the forex bye bye for now